Welcome, everybody, to the Sonoma Spiel. My name is Tim Zahner with the Sonoma Valley Visitors Bureau. Can you feel it? Can you feel the air, folks? Harvest is in the air. Last week, I mentioned that they're going to do something, and this week, we just did it. We've announced the beginning of the wine grape harvest, the most exciting time in Sonoma Valley, in the wine country. And what we did is we all assembled down by the Mission, which is a historic corner of the Sonoma Plaza. And we all got there, and there's this big bell. And if, you, if you're in California, there's 21 missions. You can follow those bells to the end of the Mission Trail. Sonoma is the last mission built in California, the only one built by the Mexicans because there was Mexican independence from Spain. Go back and ask your teachers about it, fourth graders. But basically, we all assembled there. And they had a big batch of grapes... And we all had bells, and we all started ringing the bells and really loud ringing. And then the fire truck started like, Murr. and then Siri's Ranch had their big truck, like, Murr, Murr. and in about 10 seconds or whatever, it was all over. But it was our big kickoff for Harvest. And this is a really exciting time to come visit Sonoma and Sonoma Valley. And we call it Harvest Time or Crush when they're crushing the grapes. And I think that's a good segue because this week I have somebody who knows a lot about. Sonoma Valley and knows a lot about what to do during harvest and I know I say every week I have a very special guest this time I actually mean it this week I have a very special guest Howard Sapper how are you doing I'm doing great good Howard uh you're with Pushpock Motors I am I'm the uh, CEO and the founder of you, Pushpock Motors you are okay and so you could hear from where you were probably the bell ringing because your office is like right around the corner from there absolutely it's uh it's right on the historic plaza and not far from the mission and that's funny because I stand right there on every tour I give, and I give the spiel. As you use. <laughs> the spiel. I Thank love you. the Yiddish in there. Thank you, yes. And, and basically, I tell the story of the 21 missions. Oh, good. And I start my tour in Native American history. Good. I come up through the missionaries, which is 1523, mm -hmm. San Diego, and I talk about 300 years and 21 missions. 20 under Spain and one under Mexico. Really? So I should just hire you to do the intro. Anytime you I want. Don't even I don't know why. I got the spiel down really well. You've so <laughs> I love history. Right. And I love Sonoma Valley. Right. So I love to be able to give the history. I always say that I'm an officer of Sonoma County Commission on Human Rights, so I give the All good, right. the bad, and the ugly. Oh, so good. I do give a very uh complete history kind of a balanced history there huh? i do right. Uh, yeah, right up till 15 years ago it was all through vallejo's eyes right now there's a little more balanced history out there but right right yeah so yeah that's funny that you started your your spiel with that because <laughs> that's how i start my tour i like I, I like having a fellow guest that knows how to pronounce the word spiel too so yeah, thank you that's welcome. good we'll see how many Yiddish words we can throw in here um so well before we go too deep into like the harvest and stuff like that can you tell me a bit about pushpock motors what i would is love it? to what do you guys do so I spent 42 years in the entertainment business, okay. and God and COVID has me doing this. It's an ultimate accident. If someone had said to me three years ago, uh, you'd be running a, a three-wheel electric uh, transportation company, <laughs> right. I would ask them what they were smoking. Right, It's right. very bizarre, but I'm so happy to be doing it. And here is the genesis of the story. Pushpock is a company that designs and assembles three-wheel electric vehicles, we now have a line of scooters for stand-up and electric bikes, which is the newest thing. We currently say that we're one-stop shopping for all things uh, micro-mobility. Okay. But the first three years was only three-wheel vehicles. So we have nine different vehicles that we design. We get our parts from China. Uh, ultimately, I hope not to be, but now it's, they're the, That's EV, the, supplier they're right the now. EV leaders in the world. And then we have an assembly plant down on 8th Street East where we Here's get 40 foot containers and then we put these bikes together. They're all customized to be just push puck. We are, it's our brand, much like a Toyota or a Honda or a Vespa. No, say it like a Tesla. Yeah, or Here. a Tesla. <laughs> So these we are not. Give, we don't want to give Elon right, too much. Elon food. too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he bought the company. He didn't even started. Um, did you? So these are electric vehicles. They're fully electric. They're battery powered. They're battery powered. We're currently using lithium ion batteries, and we're in the process of looking to negotiate some deals to do lithium iron. Okay. I R O N. Okay. Which is less flammable. Uh, We've never ever had a problem, but we're paying very, very close attention, including the New York Times article today. Oh, really? About you know what's going on there. If you don't pay attention with, to with the, the, just the battery stuff and how you're charging. But yeah. what is a lithium ion? Uh, pardon me, and we're taking sideways here. Is that the same thing as in a cell phone, or is that different? It's the exact same. It is okay. They so get everything a big cell from, phone. They battery. go from a cell phone up to Teslas. Okay. And everything between. So what we do is we take forty-eight volt and sixty volt, thirty-five mm -hmm. amp hour 
batteries and we put them into these vehicles. Okay. They get 50 miles to a charge, unless you're three Samoans. You may okay. get a little less going uphill. <laughs> if you're a big guy, yeah. but it's going to take a yeah, lot of energy. And, yeah. and um, the ones we do tours go 18 right. miles an hour. Oh, yeah. And the ones that we sell to the public go 25 miles an hour. That's fast. It's fast. They're street That's legal. That's residential yeah. speeds. So they're street legal. Okay. They're considered type 3 electric bicycles right now in okay. California. So they can be in bike lanes, bike paths, street mm. legal, and sidewalk. You can go into the traffic up to 30 miles an hour. If okay. you're on a street that's 35 miles an hour, which you are sometimes, we tell people there to stay to the right go like an electric bike. Got yeah. it. Or into in a and bike there are, I mean, so, I mean, you, you create these things, you, you build them, mm -hmm. you sell them. When you do tours, you're predominantly in residential, yeah. non-busy areas. So I started doing uh, just sales. And of okay. course, it's oh. a longer story. It was all accident. Oh. You know, I was just doing a friend of mine a favor. I run a nonprofit for children with disabilities called Everybody's a Star. Okay. And for my work with the Golden State Warriors and creating an event called Special Needs Family Appreciation Night, I developed strong relationships with Major League Baseball and NBA. One day, my buddy at the Warriors said he was leaving the NBA. I said, you can't do that. Our kids need the money. Right. He said, oh, I took good care of you with my boss, which he did. Okay, so he put in a good word for you or something. Well, one day he calls me about four months later and says, I found my new gig. Mm -hmm. It was through electric vehicles. He had been in Ooh, Santa Barbara. Interesting. So fast forward, I s doing a favor selling some vehicles, <laughs> and COVID hits. Wait, you went from like, but putting on events, because you're like a, you're an entertainer guy. 42 years I was running record companies, film okay. a filmmaker, okay. uh, a festival. So event. you're a problem solver. Yeah. Like you would put on stuff, but you'd solve these problems. So, but, yeah. so you came into this like electric vehicle thing through, through COVID. Yeah. It, just, so it was, like I said, I was just doing a friend a favor. And ne next thing I know is everything that I was doing, my feature films I was working on with John Legend and Akiva Goldman canceled. Hmm. My festivals canceled all this stuff that we were doing with artist signings and, and everything that we're doing so i said i guess this is what i'm supposed to do but right. I, so i sold a few and one day i said to a friend of mine i think i'm going to do tours on these and his exact <laughs> line was who in the heck and i don't think he exactly said that <laughs> right. would be wanting to go on tours on these the answer is about eight thousand people in sonoma in the last two years right so all of a sudden we got this big uh tour business right and so we're selling all over the country, but every day, twice a day, at 10 and 1.30, a group of people leave the plaza. I see them from my office, because my office is right there, and I see you guys going right by the Mission and by the Toscano Hotel. Some days it's four people, some days it's 60 people. It, I've seen huge yeah, we, convoys. Well, we do yeah. we do big corporate stuff. Yeah, it's great. Most of the big name company, you know, tech companies that you've right. heard of in Silicon Valley or San Francisco, we've but probably done Schmoogle, it. We've probably done it. Okay. We just had Amy's Kitchen the other day, oh, one of great. our local, okay, yeah. and I just spoke to the lady on the way over here. She said they had the most incredible time there. Oh, yeah. So we're doing this, as and, and then lo and behold, as I joked with you earlier. Right. Da -da -da. Da -da. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, he's holding up a, a plaque that says "Winner Via Tour Experience." Uh, we got to hold it up again because yeah. you flash it too quickly. Uh, it says "Experience Award Winner 2022 Pushpak Wins 2022 Via Tour Experience Award." Howard, what's Via Tour? So you may know Airbnb Experience because it's owned by Airbnb. I've heard of that company. Well, there's a small company called TripAdvisor. Also heard of that company. And, and their uh, experience company is called Via Tour. So this is a TripAdvisor. We're named by TripAdvisor in 2022, and just four weeks ago got another notification for 2023 Very good. that we're named top 10 in North America, United States in and North Canada. America. They have 338,000 experiences that they represent worldwide. And you're, you're in the top 10? Top 10 in, in North America, top 150 in the world. Well done. 338,000 experiences. That is fantastic. For our little small company out of Sonoma, we were pretty blown away. Huh. That's a good deal. So, and then on top of that... People say, well, what's new? Yeah, what's new? I just got a call <laughs> two weeks ago from Virgin. Okay. And if anybody knows that that uh, brand, yeah. Virgin right. Records from all my record right. days. Right from back I in the day. Richard yeah, yeah. Branson so very Branson. well. Yeah. Virgin Megastore, Virgin yep. Airlines, Virgin, Virgin Hotels. Virgin Galactic. Well, yeah. Well, Virgin right. just opened Virgin up Cruises. a new company in England about two years ago called Virgin Experiences and Virgin Gift Cards. They're mm -hmm. just launching in the United States. They've chosen a handful of companies that they're going to be launching with, and we're one of them. That's awesome. So across all platforms of Virgin, including their hotels and their airlines and everything, 
we will be part of this version experience. The tours, this push pack motor uh, tours will be, in Sonoma. Will be offered in Sonoma. Like That's I said, fantastic. we're the, certainly the only company in Sonoma and the wine country to get any of these awards. Right. We're also the top rated tour in uh, Google in all of Sonoma okay. and Napa. Well, let's, let me ask you that. Tell me, tell me about these tours. What do that what do they entail? You say 10 o'clock and 1.30. Okay. So I hop on this little electric motorcycle thing. What, what, what goes on? So safety first is our mantra. Okay. So every person that comes, they sign an indemnification, they get helmeted, they get taken out into my parking lot, and they get anywhere between a 10 and 15 minute tutorial on how to ride the bikes. Uh, you don't just throw them on them. Okay. Absolutely okay. not. We don't rent. At the very beginning, I did some renting, and God bless these women if they're listening to this podcast, but I had a handful of very wealthy women from the east side that liked to rent with, from me all the time. And one day they came back with open bottles of wine and wine glasses in their hand, and I said to them, uh, this is not cool. This right, isn't, and, right. And, and they will never do it again. Mm. So I had a conversation with my wife, and we agreed we weren't going to do rentals no more anymore. Rentals, yeah. But lo and behold, I got one more call. Howard, I have some friends coming in from San Francisco. There's um, 18 of us. Can we please, please, please rent some bikes from you? I mm. promise we're not drinking. We're just going to drive around the east side. Mm. So I'm up at Buena Vista with a 35-person tour, and they put me near the top of the hill right. because they wanted to give me a little special area, which I could see down to where you park the bikes. And I look down the hill, and I see six bikes with three women on it, Coming up, they see my bikes, and they turn around. Oh, they knew. <laughs> and they head back down, and the next day I discontinued uh, uh, uh -huh. renting. Interesting. So we do sales, and we do the tours. Mm -hmm. The tours are really safe. So to go back to it, mm -hmm. they're in the parking lot. They're getting trained. There's been a handful of times when I've had to say, can you ride with me mm -hmm. or my tour guides? We have one tour guide for every eight people, four okay. bikes. So Good. it's two to a bike. Okay. So that's our ratio, and that's also what the insurance company requires. Okay. We train everybody, and in the parking lot, I begin to give them history of Sonoma. Got I it. tell them I'm going to give them 12,000 years of history. I talk to them about the Native Americans that were in this valley, the Pomos and the Miwoks, the coastal Miwoks, the Wapop, and other nations. And I talk to them about how idyllic their life was here and go through all the beauty of what mm. it was like for Native Americans for all those years in California. And there was never any warfare in California. It's a kind of beautiful thing. And then I just say that things changed in 1523 when the Spanish government and the missionaries came here, at which point I talk about the one-day walking trail all the way up into, they get 21 in Sonoma. As you mm -hmm. said at the beginning of the program, the only mission that's not under Spanish rule was Sonoma, San Francisco de Solano. Mm -hmm. and, and there I give a little history on the Blue Wing Hotel. I tell okay. some funny stories. And then I get to tell the great story about General uh, Joseph Hooker's <laughs> hotel. Oh I yes, mean, yeah, house. Yeah, yes, it's uh, right there in my thing. So that's the Hooker House, humor. which is right. Oh, the Hooker House is yeah, it's it's right next door to me. That's right. It's literally yeah. next door to me. Right. And people love that. And then we go out and talk about all the the mission, the barracks, Toscano Hotel, uh, the, the the servants' quarters, right. the cheese factory, and then uh, we take them out to Vallejo's house. Oh, okay. I love okay. to stop at the you, Congregational Church there. That's a nice church. Because it's a great story. Yeah. I get to tell them about how great a town we have, that Jews and Gentiles side by side for the last 26 years. Uh, they share a building. Share, not only that, share a congregation and say yeah. we're one. Yeah, that's great. And then we go to Vallejo's house. And, and so people already have been immersed in more history than they would get on mostly every tour that they're going. Yeah. But from there... We go take them to award-winning cheese at my dear friends at Vela Cheese. Okay, okay. It's a unique thing that most people don't get to do. Right, yep. And then we go through vineyards. Okay. We shoot video. We shoot stills. Hmm. And we talk about the different varietals. Okay. We talk about the history of wine here in the valley with Sebastiani being the longest continuous operating because they were able to stay open during Prohibition. Right, they sold the medicinal. They sold the sacramental, sacramental medicinal. by the yeah. case. Of, hey, if the good Lord tells you to drink wine, bring it on. who are we, right? So anyway, so then, then we drive down, and I usually go to Armstrong Estates because okay. people love, I say, let's look at some homes that nobody can afford. <laughs> and then one day I These had- These are big homes on the one east day, side of the yeah, <laughs> One day I had the top 14 executives at LinkedIn, and the right. person who booked it for it said, you can't use that line with these people because they all have massive <laughs> houses in Hillsborough or Atherton. Yeah, but you said, but it's not in Sonoma, yeah. so too bad. Uh, yeah, and yeah. so then we so then we go to, to one of the wineries, at okay. which point we do a beautiful pairing of charcuterie platters that we prepare, okay. plus three or four other t types of snacks, including dark chocolate with okay, the red cool. wine. Okay. 
And then we then part of our thing is I, my background is community development. Mm -hmm. So everything that I do in every thing in my life, whether it was a music business, music festivals, or or my nonprofit, or or this now, is always building community. Right. So we're having the Push Park family. So we have a large community of businesses that we support here in the valley. Mm. And because of my years in community development, it's like, what can I do for other people? Mm. It'll always come back to me. I mean, tenfold. you are very community focused, Howard. Whenever, yeah. whenever, whenever when we're not talking, when we're on the microphones and stuff. You're you actually often talk about other things going on more than yourself. Because um, yeah, I take great pride in the evolution of our of our species. Yeah. We're constantly talking about what's not working, and of course, we could go through the litany of that. But I like to talk about what's positive and what's affirming, mm. and to be in the community and to be able to send business to the ice cream guy, send business to Harvey, send business to Bedrock, to La Casa, to, to Tiddlywinks, and then all the wineries mm -hmm. and Vell and the places we work with, that makes me feel good because if their business is doing better, then I'm doing better just because right. I've assisted in my own little way. And the community's healthy, right? Yeah. And, and we as a community have to support each other. Let me, Howard, that's a good, good question. That Did you grow up in Sonoma or where, where are you from? I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm the son of a merchant, and okay. I used to joke my father was the mayor of Squirrel Hill, which was a Jewish community in Pittsburgh. But oh, okay. it was, Wait, it was really, called Squirrel Hill. Yeah, every every major city has what we call the Jewish ghetto. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Squirrel so Hill. my but so my father was like the mayor, but not he right. walked he up and down the streets, guy. and he was a community guy. Great. So that was kind of my model. Okay. And I haven't been in retail for many, 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 many. So he years. ran, but your dad ran a store. He did. He had a very he had a high end women's fashion shop. Oh, fantastic! Okay. In Pittsburgh, so. When I was 17, I left Pittsburgh, mm. and I never came back. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I would maybe visit my parents, but I went on. And so in 1979, I opened a record company in Hawaii. As I, you do, of course. In a re recording studio, and I was in concert promotion there. But I needed to be... Wait, how'd you get to Hawaii? I was living downwind from Three Mile Island. Okay. You decided to make a change? No, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> Uh -huh. I, I was running a federally financed program for inner city youth with music okay. and art and organic gardening and stuff. And right in the middle of this program, the reactor blew. Mm -hmm. So I got in a plane and flew to Hawaii the next day. Okay. And about six weeks later, when it was obvious that I had a, a greater read on what the uh, release of radioactivity mm -hmm. was, I came back and finished the program. And then I moved to, to Hawaii. Okay. At which point I opened up a record store, a, a a, excuse me, a record label and a uh, recording studio and did concert promotion there. But when I got into doing uh, my company, which was based here in Sonoma uh, for many years in Hawaii, Global Pacific Records, I told a very dear friend of mine, Howard Morris, who was my partner, yeah. if you want to be my partner, you have to move to the West Coast because that's where the scene was happening. We were gotcha. doing a thing called New Age Music, which is a very popular. Uh, Wyndham Hill, yeah. my oh, company. Yeah. Yeah. There's a handful of companies around the world that were big players in that. Okay. And so he said, I'm not going to Marin where your brothers are. And so he went to Glen Ellen. Huh. Thusly, that's how we all got to Sonoma. So I would come. I commuted for many years back and forth from Hawaii to Sonoma. I did not know that. And so in, that was 79, 80, 81, all those years. You've been here a long time, man. I've been here 43, 44 years. Okay. And the, the new age music scene. It was a great scene. Brought you here. Yes, it did. Well, my huh. brothers were living in Marin, okay. but it brought me to Sonoma. Right. Because Howard Morris, my partner, he was he wanted to not live in Marin County. It wasn't for him. He was, Got it. He was an early person who said, this is a much better place to be, which mm. now we all know is a much better place to be. Well, I'm paid to say that, but I also agree with you. No, 100% agree. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Sonoma Valley, and that's I'm not nice. paid to say it. Right, right, right. No, it's, I, so I never knew that. That's So I'm from a Pittsburgh boy, and right. I, my wife says that I'm from the East Coast, but I joke. I said, you've never been to Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh because it's Midwest values. Yeah, it's not, it's not East Coast per se. It's definitely... It's Midwest. You know, it's a it's steel in town. It's in, the it's, Easter, it's in the Eastern time zone. Right. But if you've been in Ohio or West Virginia or Pittsburgh, you know that, that pocket, you know that... It's a cross of Appalachia and, and the Midwest. That's where I, I went to a college in Milwaukee, and when I visited Pittsburgh, Marquette, yeah, and and I'm like, it reminded me so much of the kind of industrial cities where people. I grew up here in California, yeah, where people make ideas. I don't know what they do; they do solutions. And then I go to a, a college where people make stuff, uh -huh. like there's actually factories. Yeah, and I went to Pittsburgh. I'm like, oh, this is just it's like Milwaukee, but it's got more hills, you yeah. know. Uh, but like I really liked Pittsburgh's rivers and the beautiful bridges and the buildings were solid, beautiful. I'm sure it was like all these, you know, Central Europeans settled there and built these solid town. 
Um, Pittsburgh it was great. Was considered one of the six most beautiful spots in the world hmm. in the mid 18th century. Hmm. Hmm. Venice. I mean, there's right. these other spots, and you had the confluence of the three rivers, right. and you had the Allegheny Mountains there. Hmm. And it was spectacular. A lot of when I was growing up, it was polluted because of the steel mills. But you then when the mills it, closed yeah. down, it's returned to this gorgeous, like every year, one of the five most livable cities. Well, and you see like the trees, and the leaves are changing, and the, all that. What do you call the funicular? The thing goes up the hill. It's really cool. You know, Pittsburgh's nice. So, so we, so I carry those values forward. Right. I like to joke. All my years in the entertainment business, I did a lot of deals in New York and a lot of mm. deals in L.A. Mm. And I always preferred to be doing a deal out in New York mm. because in L.A. it was a lot of happy talk and right. everybody wanted to do everything. And then you can't get a call back in New York. And I mean, we have to be clean on this conversation. <laughs> immediately it would be, are you yeah. crazy, Sapper? No way, we're doing that. Right. That was a clean version. Right, right. You would at least get to it right at away. At least you know what was happening. And and I like that. <laughs> and and so I think that there's values that came out of Pittsburgh that I hold dear, well, and good. community is definitely one of them. Right. Howard, do you do you play an instrument yourself? I do. I play Native American flute. You've probably yeah. seen me around town. Like I always do the Earth Dance thing. I right. mean, excuse me, the um, Earth Day uh -huh. in the park, and and I do a lot of uh, ceremonial work. I've done weddings, and I've done some hospice. How work. did you learn that? I played silver flute. Okay, and so the silver flute, like what I would consider like a, a classical flute. flute. Okay. Yeah, and then one day I was looking for an instrument to calm myself. Okay, and I started playing shakuhachi, which is a Japanese Zen instrument, very okay. difficult. And one day I was at a, a music uh, conference, and there was um, a trade show. I'm walking down the booths, and I see this booth of Native American flutes, and I picked up a flute, and the guy said, "No, that's not yours." He hands me this other flute. And I put it in my mouth and it seemed to almost play itself. Mm -hmm. And so that was 20 some years ago. And I've played it ever since. That's and, interesting. And so I've been, I did a lot of ceremonial work for years you with Teresa Rousseau. Okay. May she rest in peace from the Earth Dance huh. community. So, and I've used it for uh, many years with uh, children with disabilities mm -hmm. and seniors. Okay. I have a little program that I call called Time In. What's that? Take a time in before you need a time out where I teach them how to find their breath. Mm. I do guided imagery, and I do um, all kinds of storytelling, and I <laughs> use the f flute as an opportunity to have people to find some inner peace, inner quiet. Interesting. I Howard, you're like a very interesting guy over there in the little alleyway over there. Um, uh, speaking of that alleyway, you've mentioned you wanted to do some events and stuff there, like music and things like that. And yeah. What, so what's down there? Tell me about that. Well, you know, I, I had the privilege of being very involved with the Harmony Festival in Santa Rosa for many years. Right. And then when that came to its close in 2012, I started doing other things live. Mm -hmm. And I had the pleasure for about a year and a half of booking what was called the Real Fish Shop at that time. It's now going to be called Box, but it was okay. real and brand oh, real for and a brand, while. Right, right. Okay. So I had about a year and a half, and I was bringing, like, big-time international music mm -hmm. there. Besides Jeff Bunch, who I was, right. you know, and what he does up at his place. Yeah. Yeah, we were bringing everything from like dumps to funk to which is a weird little neighborhood bar thing with stage. a great stage and an outdoor area. The best venue in in bar nine. But it's really for, weird. It's like this. I think the train used to go down that street so at one yeah. time or something. Park, stage coach, parking's yeah. tough there. Yeah. So basically, now it's almost three years that I've been not day to day in the entertainment business after mm. forty two years. Hmm. And one morning I woke up and. I said to my wife, I said, you know, I'm really having an ego death. She said, why? I said, for 42 years, I would wake up. I was kind of like a semi-big shot in the you entertainment were the big business. You big guy, dude. Yeah. And, and I said, now, and she goes, honey, now you're the entertainer. <laughs> so I was kind of a, so I've been sponsoring stuff, you know, some right. stuff in the community. Right. But my chief creative officer is a very uh, great music and film producer yeah. and he's won some you know platinum records and and some awards for his film work but he also had a cycle in south beach and in beverly hills as a top electronic dj so we've been okay. coming up with a concept of doing a thing called autumn nights or whatever right. thing is in the el paseo court great it's one of the most under utilized courtyards yep. it's everybody I was going to say, if, if you're going off First Street East, there's a little uh, archway. Mm -hmm. You go through it. It opens up. There's a fountain. There's a chocolate shop, Harvey's Donuts. There's you're, Razzle Dazzle. Razzle there's, Dazzle. At the front is a really nice Israeli lady has a multi-winery wine tasting oh, space. Right. You have La Casa. You have Bedrock. And, and you've got the chocolate shop. 
And then you guys. Yeah, and then you got a bunch of people in offices above. Right. So I went to everybody, and everybody's really excited for autumn nights or whenever it's going to be. And we're going to do once a month. I love this. Peter's going to DJ. You know, he'll do like... you got to do this. Well, we're, we're, we're definitely going to do it. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. And, and so it's going to be a really wonderful thing, and it's going to be free to the public. Great. And we're going to just uh, open up an opportunity so, for people to gather in community. Howard, this is like one thing that does drive me crazy about Sonoma is we have these little alleys. There's one called the Mercado, which uh -huh. is just down from you. There's another one called the Paseo. Where Murphy's is. Where, yeah, Murphy's, that's the Place des Pyrenees. Yeah. Um, and like Murphy's does some stuff because they're like an Irish bar and they got music there. Uh, Irish bar with the Himalayan food right next to it, yes. which is great. And their new um, juice bar. Oh, the new juice bar, right. So I, I would love to see, and I can't wait until you do this, all these little alleys having different things at different times because it gets you off the plaza. And it, you know how you go to Europe and you find these little pocket neighborhoods and yeah. you're so excited. And that's exactly what you're in is a little pocket neighborhood. I um, actually use the European model quite a bit in my conversations about the plaza. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we're going to get to a place soon where we can put some tables and chairs back out on the street. I really mm. like the Europe. Of course, some of my customers had a harder time parking, mm. but in general, I would give that trade off any day for the yeah. Euro feel. And we have these uh, environments, I would call them. Right. Mine is the hardest to find because the, 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 <laughs> well, the wire the space. And, 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 and it's cobblestones, right? Yeah, and it's right. thinner. Right. But I mean, what we're doing is, is really. Uh, special because we're all there supporting each other no it's a good thing and and that's why it used to be right how before i get into making you answer visitor questions um i know you do support a lot of charities uh -huh. and, and group here in sonoma can you tell me a bit about those that you're working with yeah i'm gonna put my glasses on <laughs> so we do sponsorship of self mm -hmm. we're currently sponsoring transcendence theater oh they're good i've had them on the podcast yeah they they're great they good shows we sponsored the city party the last couple of years. Sonoma year. City Party is very funny, for those who don't know. Sonoma throws itself a party every year. We call it Sonoma City Party. Everyone shows up. 46 years. And uh, it's just... It's or 26, 26 years. years. Yeah, Ken Brown Ken Brown. And the whole, the whole shtick was just like to um, get the neighborhood together and have fun. And then we also sponsor for uh, probably a lot of years, Sonoma International Film Festival. That's a good one. That's if you like one. movies. Yeah. And, 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 who doesn't and, like then, movies? and then Lighting in the Plaza. Good one. November 18th this year, Saturday, November 18th. And those are the sponsorships. We probably sponsor some other stuff. Right. We're very generous, I think, with our gift certificates. Hmm. I give a $700 value, which is four tours, wow. four person tour to almost everybody who asks. Okay. Whether it's uh, wigs for cancer or Pets Lifeline hmm. or, or, or whatever it is, probably right. 20 or 30 times a year. We'll, we'll be part That's participant good. in that because we want to do we want to give back. Right. But on a day to day basis, we have three charities that every tour and sale we make we give a small portion. And okay. one is Everybody Is a Star, which works with cognitively disabled, artistically gifted youth. Number two is Sonoma Ashram. Okay. And when we're doing hunger and COVID relief in India, and and lastly is Homeless Action Sonoma. Okay. Andy Philander's our organization. We love them, and they just finished building 18 tiny homes here. The, in the tiny community. homes in the springs looks great. Yeah, it's great. So it's right by Baker and so Cook. So currently yeah. we're working with them and. We'll soon be opening up locations in various parts of the country, God willing. For Pushpak? Uh, yes. The okay. we, just, we just completed a deal with Norman Krug and his Krug Hotel chain. Okay. So we're going to be working very closely with Sonoma Valley Inn, Best Western. Got it. And he has yep. two hotels in Healdsburg, a, a Best Western, and then his first Hilton Hotel. Yep. yep. And they're going to be opening up a breaking ground shortly on a Marriott across uh, from Boys and Girls Club oh, in, right, Sonoma. in Sonoma. Right. So we'll be working very closely with those four hotels, and it's a model for what we want to do around the country is to bring our experience to historic places, whether it's St. Augustine, Florida, whether it's mm. Capitola, whether it's you know Nevada City or, or Bend, Oregon, wherever. You've got a lot of different ideas that you well, can... Well, we have people that we're already in conversations with. What's well, funny because you seem to have taken your experience of putting on shows, uh -huh. which you've got to be good with logistics and repetition of certain things, but also creative. Yeah. And you're finding these different spots to make it work, right? I could see Old Sacramento. And it's interesting or because, like that, yeah, Truckee, whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting because being in the entertainment business, you're always promoting and on and on and on and mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time that I've been this quiet and slow and <laughs> diligent for me. Right. That's, that's a so, change, huh? So it took me three years to, and a lot of it was COVID, right. to have what I call proof of concept. I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure this time anybody that I mentioned to them that this was a business they should be associated with, that I could show them numbers of success mm -hmm. and show them these kind of 
right award like the, the viator award yeah the, but and, when you're a, when you're a promoter don't you get like a satin jacket and isn't that cool do you yeah. do you miss the satin jacket days i absolutely don't <laughs> right. i what i what i miss is being on the stage mm. and looking out at twenty thousand people with what i would call um that's big crazy. smiles on that's right faces. everyone's happy and and so we're in the happy business now, right? And so we want to stay in the slightly happy smaller business. scale, but it's still the happy business. Um, Howard, before we get the questions, if people want to find more information about Pushpoc, do you have a website? Absolutely, it's called www.pushpoc p u s h p a k motors dot net. Okay. They can send me any questions at Howard dot okay. motors at gmail dot com, or go. Uh, Onto our website, we have a lovely podium. Mm -hmm. uh, people can kind chat, of see everything in there. Bot chat. No, you know, and, and oh, really? We, we answer the questions probably within five or ten minutes of them okay. coming through our, our website. Well, that's good. And Pushpak is what's what's where does that name come from? Thank you for asking. Pushpak is a Hindi mythology name. Remember, I told you one of my three charities is mm -hmm. Soma Yagasham. Right. So I've been blessed for the last thirty-four years to be able to study with a teacher hmm. uh, from the Soma Yagasham, and um, Babaji, I went to him when I was starting the business, and I said, I need a name for the business. And he gave me a long list of Hindi mythology, and I mm -hmm. know the mythology pretty well. Mm -hmm. And Pushpak was near the top. And mm -hmm. if I tell you this brief story, you'll know exactly why we're called Pushpak. Go. There, there's a god by the name of Ram. Mm -hmm. Ram has a wife by the name of Sita. Mm -hmm. And Sita is the embodiment of beauty and femininity. Mm -hmm. And Sita transported herself in a swan-like flying chariot. There was a guy mm -hmm. by the name of Ravana, and he was a brilliant scholar, but he was very full of himself. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He kidnapped Sita and Ram, could not do anything about it, and took the chariot and Sita to Sri Lanka and put them in prison. Took a group of demons and put them all the way around the prison. And it was a David versus Goliath story. Ram had no chance of success, but lo and behold, he was successful, hmm. and he rescued Sita in a swan-like flying chariot, and they soared victoriously, and that swan-like chariot was called a pushpak. Got it. So we like to say that we're soaring victoriously into the post-automotive transportation revolution, and anybody out there that wants to join our revolution... <laughs> Come find you. We're changing the world one electric vehicle at a time. Man, I love that. That's a great story. Thank you. That's a good one. I love that. Well, we're going to um, – well, actually, no, you got an email. Um, you were reading to me before. I think you should share that story because people don't know that you can also buy these from you. Yeah. And we're changing some uh, very – we're changing lives for less. Well, you mentioned micromobility. People don't realize how much American world, especially post-1945, like, was built around the automobile. Right. And if you don't have a car and if you live in a rural area – or if you're disabled and have mobility issues, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're kind of like, forget you, right? Like we're not good in the United States with like, our buses aren't Terrible. that good. We don't even have benches half the time. Uh, our streets are made for cars, which is great if you're in a car. If you ever saw the movie Who Killed the Electric Car, you know exactly what occurred and so, what happened. So it's just, it's just bad, but someone wrote you a nice email. Are you yeah. able to tell me a bit about that? I definitely can. And before I do, I want to tell your people, audience, something really that blew mm -hmm. my mind. I went to a conference six months ago in Port Richmond, mm -hmm. and the um, primary speaker was a man by the name of Eric Adams. He's the mayor of New York. Oh, yeah. And as a keynoter, Mr. Adams said that they're spending millions of dollars in New York on infrastructure for micro and mini mobility, mm -hmm. which is everything from a, a little stand-up scooter up to golf cars. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, that's interesting. And then... After he was done, McKissie and Forbes made a presentation together, and what they said was that in the year 2022, there was more dollars going to be spent on micromobility than electric cars worldwide. That's the size of what we're talking about. And by 2050, we're talking about a $5 trillion industry, and that by 2050, around the world, 10 times as many people will transport themselves. Get that figure. Mm -hmm. 10 times as many people in micro and mini mobility devices than cars. Right, because it's the last so mile problem. That's it's just yeah. going well, short it, distances, it, it, right? Well, it, we go up to 50 miles. Yeah. So the last 50 miles well, you yeah, can go on my go. vehicle. Yeah. So we're selling and we're definitely changing people's lives. And today, right before I left here, it says 117 and it's probably just before three o'clock yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I get the following email. Yeah. Can I read it? Of course, read it. Hello, y'all. <laughs> my name is Dora, and I live in Alabama. I used to live in an old farmhouse near my daughter and grand blessings. I love that term. Yeah. Then COVID hit, and prices and 
and went through the roof. I couldn't afford my life there anymore. I'm disabled and I'm 56 years old. I decided to live in an RV I bought. The only place I could get it, it was if I put the RV in an RV park in the next town over, away from my family. When I first moved here, I would have to pay people to take me where I needed to go, and that got very costly and very fast as well. Plus, it got harder and harder to find rides. I live outside the city limits, so there's no public transportation here. I'm strong-willed and unable to drive a car, and the nearest store is a few miles away. Well, praise be to God, one day on Facebook, I seen a post from Pushpok. I right away fell in love with their vehicles. I felt God's hands had guided me to try to get one. Praise be to God, I was able to get one. Best decision ever. I do not have to beg for rides anymore. I can come and go as I please. It gives me my independence and dignity back. I couldn't be more thankful. Me and my grand blessings love it. We use it daily with great big smiles on our faces. Mr. Sapper and the staff of Pushpok are some of the best people I've ever known. I love them, and I love being part of the Pushpok family. I recommend them to everyone I meet. It almost brought me to tears wow. to know that, you know, we have clients from 14 to 92. Mm -hmm. We have kids in Petaluma driving these to middle school, mm -hmm. and here's this lady there. And at the beginning, it was old people. Now it's not at all. Right. There's a lady in town. I, somebody came up to me the other day and said, that's so amazing that you drop all these vehicles off t Tuesday at the farmer's market. I said, those aren't, those are my customers. <laughs> They're not yours. They're yeah, not they, mine, those are my customers. Them, yeah. And this one lady, she's, I don't know, maybe late 30s, early yeah. 40s. They can moved here from San Francisco. And she put on the back of her push puck, my other car is a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> well, Howard, I love it. It's, it's great because I think you, you've tapped into the people, people who are stuck at home who don't drive or have mobility issues because they can't walk very well. Yeah. This gives them inclusion you know, in, in being an active member of our society. Right, which brings back dignity and agency. And that's a wonderful thing. Like, yeah. That's a great email that you got from that woman and, and so, her grand blessing. So when you're not really stuck in that modality, you have to look right. at it at a broader perspective. You know, the mayor and the chief of police and the city council and, the, and Sonoma County government mm -hmm. love what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're green at mm -hmm. a time when everyone needs to be more green. Yep. And Lisa, our events coordinator, she came back from, right before the city party, she came back from Hawaii mm -hmm. and she was there and she said, all the resorts where people were driving around everywhere with golf carts. And she said, I came back and told all my coworkers, every hotel needs to have push pucks. Yeah, yeah. People shouldn't be driving a half yeah. a mile to come into town or getting dropped <laughs> no. off on Ubers. They should be on these kind of it's vehicles. It's just plug them right in. They don't take a lot. They're easy, they're smaller impact. Plus think about that, apply that. You don't need a lot of road maintenance. You, you don't have a lot of big accidents because you don't have a huge car running down the road. All the last mile there. solutions for public Boom. transit. I love it. All right, Howard, we're going to switch gears. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here's what we do. We, uh, we have two visitor centers, as you know, because you've been in the one I in the plaza them. all the time. You're on the south. Um, we answer all sorts of questions. We get through Facebook. You're going to help me. I got love to. Questions. Okay, so this is a section that we call We, we get, 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 get Questions. questions. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. This one, uh, someone emailed us this one. People, some people are planners. I'm not a big planner. This person's a planner. Yeah. The question is, what would the weather be like visiting the end of February? It can be variable. Most of the days at the end of February are quite lovely. Mm -hmm. I played golf many a day in February. The first two years of my business, I did tours every day in February. Right. This year, we had the wettest weather in 42 years. So <laughs> it's a little wet. It's supposed to be another El Nino year. It might mm -hmm. be a little damp, but end of February is some of the very, very best time to be here. Right. Because the, everything's green and lush. And then sometimes you get mustard grown in the field with well, yellow flowers. We love, we love phenomenal. That, yeah. You're right. And, and compared to Pittsburgh, uh, the end of February is a little different. We're there. not shoveling snow. No. <laughs> so there's, yeah, it doesn't snow very much in Sonoma. If it does snow, it's always up on the mountains. I think, I think I've never really seen snow stick here. But it could rain, but it's not, you know, it's yeah. fine. It's not February is a nice time to be here. It's and it's better. not as crowded. Good. All right, here's another one we got via Facebook. You, you're, this one's right up your alley because I do it. I need recommendations for some top reds, cabs, petite Syrahs, tastings in the Sonoma area. Also, some of the best whites, Chardonnays, and Rosé. I love, by the way, they said top reds, and they named every other wine. <laughs> so uh, cabs and petite Syrah in the Sonoma area. What are some good ones? Well, there's big, bold cabs. Right. You know, I happen to like the, uh, the reds at uh, Three Fat Guys. Okay. I, I think they're, they're 
Uh, Pinot Noir is my favorite glass of wine that I like anywhere. Okay. They have a big, bold uh, well, they do. Okay. Rutherford cab that comes. It's reserved here. Huh. But okay. They, and they also have good cabs. I think they have nice reds at Sebastiani's. Okay. I love the uh, Pinots at Walt. Oh, yeah. Walt has one. very nice right. Pinot. Which is right by the Apollo. And, uh, and there's some good uh, good reds at uh, at Gunlock Banshu. Okay. Okay. So those are good. What about, um, <laughs> see, this person also said some of the best whites, Chardonnays and Rosé. Now, Chardonnay is technically a white yeah. wine, technically. Do you, are you a Chardonnay drinker? Do you like Chardonnay? Where, where you, you know, I, I, I'm actually not, I don't like whites that much, but mm -hmm. there are some whites I'll drink. Mm -hmm. I like the Rosés. Okay. And you know, especially if they're if they're the real rosé and they're not just a crush of a bunch of red grapes. Mm. A couple of places that I, I go that they'll make the rosé and it's just a little pink because they'll take the skin out after about two hours. Right. So I it like that. Just, just touches. And it then right the Chardonnay is a usually dry and buttery for my taste. Again, right. once again, I like Three Fat Guys Chardonnay because okay. it's two really interesting things. If you look at right. Sebastiani's uh, uh, Cherry Block Cabernet. Right. right. It's grown in a place that was a cherry orchard for 60 years. The last 58 years, it's been all Cabernet. Okay. Lo and behold, it still retains the cherry essence. Got it. Same thing with the San Giacomo fields. They're Chardonnays, which mm. I drink a lot at the Three Fat Guys. Right. It's uh, 58 years of Chardonnay. 60 years before that, it was it was pears and apples. Mm. So you're talking about that fruit forward somehow carrying forward into it. it has that essence right there. Huh? So yeah, and and I, I also like. Um, um, you like any of the sparklings? I like the or sparkling, yeah. yeah. I, I, we have some really, really good uh, champagnes. We can't call them stuff. champagnes. No, the French are going to write French. a letter now. You yeah. get two letters you said it twice. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, here's, a, here's a good one, and it's apropos because we are taping this around a three-day weekend. So here's the question we got. What's a good way to spend a three-day weekend in Sonoma Valley? Well, one of those days I would go out on a push puck tour. <laughs> another, would you? Another, would you? I, I, would, I definitely would. Very good. Another day I would definitely do some hiking. Okay. Sonoma Valley has amazing hikes, mm -hmm. especially if you consider Kenwood part of it, because we go right yeah. up to there. Yeah, yeah. So Sugarloaf yeah, and spot. the regional park is, mm -hmm. is fabulous, and um, Montini and the Overlook Trail. Good ones. So I would do all of that. Well, you mentioned uh, Sonoma Valley Regional Park, which, pretty plain name, pretty good spot. It's even uh, mobility accessible because they have a paved trail it's that goes all the way from, from 12 to Arnold, essentially, almost into the town of Glen yeah. Ellen. Uh, and that's a great little hike yeah. and, slash walk. Yeah. yeah, and then of course we have amazing restaurants. But yeah, there's a lovely uh, air balloon tour that oh, really? comes yeah. out of the airport. That's that's really nice. Yeah, that's a good yeah, one. So we like to support okay. Sonoma balloons. Good job. I didn't even think about that. I mean, I I brought every other type of uh, transport because I thought I'd talk about that. But yeah. the hot air ballooning is a fun thing if you're here for a three day weekend. Yeah, we send business to each other. We oh, like yeah? I like what they're doing. They like what I'm doing a lot. It is pretty neat to see the balloons over the valley. It's good. And then you know. Depending what time of the year is, Tuesday evening, mm. we have a lovely farmer's market. That's I have right. a tour that's 36-person tour, and they said they wanted to end the tour at the farmer's market, and they're going to have all their people use the food trucks. You're going to drive up on a little push by? <laughs> I'm on, on a, not one, on a whole bunch of them. That's and we're fantastic. Gonna, we're going to drop them off, and then they're going to do, they're going to have some people from their staff right. set up the tables and the things, and they're just going to be in the park for a Tuesday. I myself love... If you're here for a long weekend, and it mm -hmm. includes Friday, I love our Friday morning farmer's market. Yep, yep. It's a real farmer's market yep. for farmers, yep. and that gives you a feel of, of this town. Sonoma, what you can't forget is this is still a small town. Mm -hmm. We may be getting caramelized a bit. That was always my <laughs> joke when I moved here is we didn't want to get caramelized. Get caramelized like caramel. But yeah. you have such a beautiful place that we live, people are going to want to come here and, right. and do fun stuff. and. And if you know, if you want to be very, very, very active, do some hiking. Yeah. You know, we will be doing by early next year a thing called Trike and Hike, which is instead of having wine in the middle of the tour, mm -hmm. and we're going to launch it in the f uh, sp winter period okay. when we, as, as a valley, are always talking about some non-wine opportunities. Some little winter wellness going Northern on there, wellness right? Yeah. And everything around wellness. Also, uh, my friend has a really nice 
uh, bike tour company as well. That oh, okay. I, I, I love what they're doing also. Yeah, there's some bike rental companies here. We have both uh, the Wine Country Cyclery and Snow Adventures. They do great yeah, tours. Hunt, they're, they're good Hunt people. Daily's been on here. Actually, I took, it's funny, I, uh, before I came in here, I went to the visitor center and kind of grabbed all the different ways to see uh-huh. to see what's there. And I'll, I'll read them off. Of course, you have like Cinema Valley Wine Trolley. Leaves yeah, at 10 yeah, o'clock. That's, that's nice. Yeah, take a little yeah. tour there. We've got uh, Active Wine Adventures. He he takes people out on hikes. Yeah, you know, I know, things yeah. there. Um, I've got the Cinema Food Tour. They do walking tours. Yeah, right? they're very interested in collaborating with me. They want to get to a broader walking space. We've got the uh, the cannabis tours, Happy Travelers Tours from I'd Van. like to see that one. Oh, from Van? It's interesting yeah. because Sparks has come to me and they asked me if I would be willing to to instead of having wine tasting, do a little bit of uh, cannabis tasting in the middle of my tour, and I said, we'll get back to you. you got to figure that one out. Yeah. But that's uh, yeah, but the local dispensary there. Then we've got Destination Drivers, and they will drive your car if you're looking for that stuff. We've got, uh, if you want to go you know, higher end, pure yeah. luxury. I like coffee. We've got, we got Platypus Tours, which is uh, also a driven tour, but there. Canopy Tours, which is not here. Canopy's nice. But you can go do zip lining through the Redwoods, yeah, which is really nice. nice. Uh, but then I said the most important, of course, Howard, is Pushpock. And, and you know why we <laughs> and, and nice the last for best yeah. last, but you know it's an interesting thing because people ask me why that what's the difference and mm-hmm. here's this short easy answer mm-hmm. you can go into any tour bus and have steel and glass between you and the world mm-hmm. or you could be in open air spending three or five hours like you're on a magic carpet ride going through Sonoma Valley smelling the the fragrances people waving to you it's right. a much more interactive experience and for some reason, whatever we're doing, we're building community even each day. Right. I had this amazing experience about three months ago. I had five couples that didn't know each other. We did the tour, and at the very end, they said to each other, so where are we all going together for dinner? Oh, so it was kind of like... Kind of built the e- community, right? Kind of yeah. like that email from Dora. Yeah. It had that same feeling like, well, we did something right, that these people wanted to continue... That's great. Being together the way we were. I love it. Well, Howard, thank you so much for coming on and, and answering the, first of all, for answering all the questions. You're hired to work okay. at the Visitor Center. We're always Any, looking for volunteers. I'd be honored anytime. Um, again, what's your website? One more time, please. www.pushpuckmotors.net. Mm-hmm. And if you're out there and you're getting this experience and you're a planner mm-hmm. or you're a travel agent or you're a corporate uh, yeah, events corporate, person, right. Please call us. You can also reach us at 707-343-1192. We'd love to tailor specialized events. I have a group coming out that doesn't want to drink. I just put together a wonderful 22-person tour with no alcohol. We can do it. Wine Country for Mormons, we can do it. Thank you. So what we want want to say is thank you so much to the Visitors Bureau because if you're not aware of it, this is an amazing blessing in our valley. And uh, I'm a big fan of Tim. He's done an amazing job. Oh, <laughs> you're so nice. Thank you. Well, for everybody else, if you after you're done booking your Pushpock Motors tour, make sure you go to cinemavalley.com for special deals, offers, uh, events, and know what's happening. If you like this podcast and you've listened this far, you must be committed. So please hit the subscribe button. Also, leave a comment and tell everyone how great this is. Uh, Mom and Dad, hope you're doing well. Boy, hope you finally are going to class. And kid, let's pass that driver's permit test soon. We'll talk to everybody next week. Thanks. Thanks for having me.